we go on with the with the program and our next speaker is Michael Stenzel CEO from MST Vision company and Michael Stenzel will speak about FPGA accelerated computational imaging Herr Stenzel yeah. we are looking forward to your yeah. talk the stage is yours Thank you so much Is Mac working Okay yes now it is Okay, so thanks for the introduction. Um, here's my agenda for today. I will give one slide to explain you who we are, what we do, and then I would like to talk about um, photometric stereo, how we combine it with high-speed sorting, and what we plan in future, how to combine it with deep learning. So what are we doing? MS Division is not a typical system integrator. We are a development service provider. So we help our customers to solve problems in industrial imaging. We don't typically build systems. We're using our know-how and our experience with uh, well-known tools to solve the problems of our customers. We're using Helken, like from Amitech, uh, or uh, Visual Applets from Basner to solve our applications. But we do much more than just software or FPGA programming. We also do feasibility studies, or we help uh, our customers to procure systems or to evaluate old systems. But using our uh, know-how and, techno uh, and uh, experience, we also develop some technologies. And I would like to show a few of them in the next slides. How to start a presentation? It's always to, good, to start with a good quote. And if you're looking for a definition, where do you look? Wikipedia. So I just checked Wikipedia. What's the definition according to Wikipedia about computational imaging? So computational imaging is the process of indirectly forming images from measurements using algorithms that rely on a significant amount of computing. And most people, if they talk about computational imaging, start talking about photometric stereo. Other companies call it shape from shading or having different brand names, but quite a lot of systems use in the same approach. It was introduced 40 years ago by Woodham, and one of the most well-known applications is the Braille dot print on pharmaceutical packages. On the left side, you see a picture taken with the cell phone of a pharmaceutical package, and there's the Braille dot code on top. And these codes need to be inspected 100%. And as you see in this image, quite tough to see the Braille dot code. Taking four images of the same scenery with four independent uh, illumination directions. Actually, you only need three, but most use four. You can use the four images, put it into the algorithms, and you can calculate the so-called albedo, which is like the texture. And you can calculate the surface curvature, because out of this algorithm, you get the surface normal vector. And using this vector, you can calculate the curvature. And on the left image, it's very tough to see the bright dot code. On the right side, it's like kindergarten. It's no problem at all. That's why many people like this technology. We do, but we also do love line scan applications. And photometric stereo on line scan is not as easy anymore. So I need to explain how we do it. So one technology which we have developed already 10 years ago, we name it multi-channel. It's time division multiplexing of line scan illuminations. So we are using the Basler frame grabber, using the FPGA to control the camera exposure and to control up to eight different illuminations. It's based on out-of-the-shelf components, and without any CPU load, we rearrange the imaging data which we uh, get from the camera because we strobe through, uh, through the lines, and out of the frame grabber, you get a rearranged image because this is needed to do photometric stereo on line scan applications. And we can do this with up to eight different illuminations. Illumination direction, wavelengths, backlight, uplight, dark field, bright field, whatever you need, we can have up to eight different illumination scenarios. And if you have a special light, like this one, it's a line light example from MTD, but there are also other brands, and the line light the light is coming out tilted, so it's an oblique beam. So you need four of these lights with the tilted beam. You put these four lights, two in front of the camera, two behind the camera, and you rotate two of them. 
the product only goes one time to your system and you have four independent illumination directions. So the acquisition of photometric stereo images already solved using this technology. Then you can use Helcon or Matrox or Cognex or whatever, whoever has the photometric stereo algorithm integrated to calculate the image. But talking about line scan camera and surface inspection, you need a lot of data. And the CPU is by far too slow to enable fully continuous web inspection using photometric stereo. We had this limit, it was tough to overcome, so what we did, we put it into the FPGA. And why do we love it? First, uh, uh, one application I would like to show you, it's a fake application, but as, let's assume you are a manufacturer of transparent foils for food packaging. These foils are printed with very colorful prints, but your customer is very crazy about contamination because no one wants to have an insect in his foil used for food packaging. The upper image, it's a fake one. So we printed our logo black on white on a paper. And to explain the challenge, we also printed the picture of a dead insect in the print. So it's flat, it's printed. On top of this paper, we put on three real dead insects. And in the upper image, you see it's very complex, if not impossible, to separate the print from the real contamination on the surface. Using photometric stereo, the lower image, it's so easy. It's again kindergarten to detect the contamination because the print itself is completely gone. So instead of having complex software afterwards, we put the complexity in the um, acquisition of the images, and this picture is calculated, and that's the uh, interesting thing, in the FPGA. So this image is created without any CPU load inside the frame grabber, and you can have this with 30 cameras, and your CPU doesn't need to do anything. And even in this image, it would be very easy to do FPGA-based processing to detect the contamination very fast. Another application which is quite interesting is battery production. This is the image uh, taken of the demo unit we have on our booth. It's a battery foil for electronic cars, and you always have the problem you have shiny parts like the metallic film, and this sample it's copper, and you have this coating, the slurry they put on for the battery, and it's very challenging to do surface inspection on the shiny and the dark parts. Top left, you see like a picture taken with your cell phone. Then we can multiplex up to eight different illumination channels, as I mentioned. So we choose one reflection channel. We choose a backlight to detect pinholes, because backlight is perfectly uh, to see the pinholes. We added a dark field. And then we have these four images used for photometric stereo. And out of these four images, we calculate the curvature image the X and Y gradient, and we also calculate the albedo. I think it's quite tough from the back maybe to see the details, so uh, I uh, choose to zoom. Top left, again, cell phone picture. And in the reflection, I enhance the contrast to make sure you see it on the screen. You see also uh, structures in the very dark part uh, using the reflective mode, and you see the areas where there's no coating at all. In the dark field, you also see quite well the wrinkles, but in the dark field, you don't see the wrinkles in the dark area. But if you go into the photometric stereo image, it's very easy because the photometric stereo doesn't, take, doesn't care if it's bright or dark. You see the wrinkles in very bright, uh, very bright or very dark areas. That's uh, why we love photometric stereo, especially um, in surface inspection. And Customers ask us, can you do photometric stereo on free-falling objects, like metal parts which are falling down, and you're looking for surface defects on the topography? And we can do, because we also use the FPGA to do high-speed sorting. So we have developed a technology where we use the standard uh, um, Basler frame grabber with the FPGA inside. We program the FPGA, and we have developed our own electronic boards to control many actuators, because that, that's what you do in free fault sorting. You need many actuators to blow out the bad parts. And we could use photometric stereo for the acquisition, and we could detect 
the parts which have a topography area er, um, error on the surface. And we can control up to 1,000 of these high-speed valves at a frequency of a kilohertz. And the best part is our response time can be as low as one millisecond, because we do everything in the FPGA without any CPU load. And the next uh, slide is a video um, of a project we had uh, uh, for uh, mineral sorting. Hopefully it starts, yes. So the aim was to sort one million objects a second. And the FPGA and uh, the, um, the camera acquisition is able to do so. It was a 16K line scan camera running at 140 kilohertz. We had two line lights with each 3.5 mega look, so it was very bright. And the FPGA was fast enough, but the limit is always the mechanics. So if some of you guys are doing sorting, you will know this. At the end, it's very tough to present all these granules in the depth of focus to the camera so that you can do the free fold sorting. So we changed uh, the industry because it was at that time that the FPGA or the camera was the speed limit, but now it's not anymore. And just to give a small perspective what we are doing, because it's a new project, an RD project, what we have started uh, recently. Um, we call it hybrid image processing on FPGAs. It's a public founded project together with Basler and the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. Because the problem is, the technology I've showed you, we are extremely fast. One millisecond, one mil million objects a second, it's unbelievably fast. But we are very limited in algorithms because we can just do simple thresholding, opening, closing, things like this. Yeah, so extremely fast, but not the smartest algorithms. So our aim is to combine classical image processing with deep learning methods. One example that here is we do a plot analysis in the FPGA. We just check where's the granule. We cut out the granule, transfer just what is a small amount of the image data uh, to the CPU or GPU. Yeah, and then there will be a CNN or whatever our customer uh, will bring to the table. And then there's a decision, yes or no. And then we transfer this result with an ID back to the FPGA. And then we activate the nozzles again. And the, uh, um, the chart you see, it's brand new. It's just 10 days old. It's, uh, um, for the development, uh, we needed to develop uh, like this low latency framework because in future, the plan is to have the image processing and the CNN in the FPGA. Not possible in the moment. But for development, we also uh, want to use CPU and GPU to test the concepts. So this picture shows we cut out one megabyte of pixel data of image data, transfer to the CPU or GPU, and then we return just one kilo kilobyte of metadata, like an ID and a yes or no. This granule needs to go. And the round trip latency we obtained on a Linux optimized system uh, below one millisecond. So if you have like a CNN solution for your granules, we just need to add one millisecond and we could use your net to do free fall sorting. And actually, we are looking for partners to evaluate applications. So if someone of you has an application which needs high speed, and you want to combine it with the FPGA solutions that we offer, you're welcome to talk to us. Also, people in the stream, so hopefully you will drop us an email or give us a call. So it's brand new. And we had an idea how, why did we do this, which is the last slide. So let's assume it's free fall sorting, or it could be also a surface inspection. You have free falling objects, and we can multiplex dark field, bright field. We can do IR cameras. We can do different wavelengths, up to eight different illuminations, whatever your camera is sensitive to, we can use it. It could be photometric stereo. Uh, we transfer the data to the FPGA. We just cut out the blobs, transfer the blobs to RAM, CPU, GPU with an ID or timestamp. The unit is creating a, a result. And we only receive the result with this ID then we are back in the hardware, which you need anyway to grab the data. And you have the FPGA anyway. And then we just track the object, and we can delay the moment you want to activate the nozzles in sub-microsecond precision. 
you don't need a soft SPS or external device or a special DSP board. You just do it in the frame capper you have anyway. It's future, so it's not there. So I don't claim this to be finished, but that's the target where we want to go. And if you're interested, just come to us. Hall 10, yeah, E40 or 4, uh, we are happy to discuss your application. We have like five guys on the booth, and we love technology. So just visit us or drop us an email. OK, Mr. Stelzer, thank you for the presentation. Thank you. It was really a presentation about an FPGA, Accelerated Computational Imaging. So very impressive. And we are still in time and have room for, for uh, one or two questions. Um, first question, where do you see limitations of the FPGA concerning the realization of more and more complex algorithms for example, the deep learning network yeah. stuff. The deep learning networks are too big to be put into the FPGA. Mm -hmm. So the FPGA doesn't have the resources to be very fast. So that's part of Basler and KIT. So they want to make the net smaller, more compact, going from flow to int, and to make it small enough to be put into the FPGA. But we are limited in algorithms. We, many of you are developers of Helcat, Matrox, or whatever. So you are used to complex algorithms. Forget about all of this in the FPGA. It's sorry for it's like a pain in the ass uh, to, to put in these algorithms in the FPGA. Visual applets is great, so you can do a lot of things, but still, it's you're limited what you can do in terms of algorithms. Speed, no limit. You see one millisecond. There's no valve faster than one one kilohertz. So speed is not an issue. It's the issue of complexity of algorithms in the FPGA. Okay, thank you for the answer. Another question, um, how is the, um, that is um, uh, concerning uh, your slides at the beginning, uh, how is the angle of tilting for the photometric stereo acquisition determined? Is it, do you? No, um, it depends on the line light you use. So you, you have uh, two angles in Helken. So I'm sorry, I'm a Helken user in Helken. These angles are used, are named tilts and slants. Mm -hmm. So one is like this. It can be like 25, 45, 60 degrees, okay. because you want a strong angle for shadowing. But if it's too strong, it's tough also to put the other angle, because if this is the scan line, you need to put two lights very close to each other. So typically, we try to work with 45, 45 degrees in both angles, roughly. OK, that's a good recommendation. Thank you for that. Thanks again for the presentation.